When you hear the name of Professor Lucci, usually the first thing that pops into your mind is his light sense of humor and his ability to make a whole auditorium laugh. His students know him for his ability to make his classes interesting and his dedication to philosophy. Today, my team and I are going to spend the day with one of AUBG's most beloved professors. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Professor Lucci, can you tell us more about the meeting you had today with the conference office? Uh, yes, uh, the main uh, topic of the meeting uh, uh, was a conference I'm organizing. It would take uh, place from May 3rd to June uh, the 1st, uh, 2017, so in a couple of months. And uh, it's the, the annual conference of the, uh, of the International Society for Intellectual History. Uh, they have it every year at a different place, at a different university. This year they're going to have it uh, at the UBG. There are going to be more than 160 participants. Uh, and it's quite an important event. There are people from uh, many different countries, uh, from three different continents, and uh, I look forward to it, definitely. So. Professor Lucci is lecturing at the moment, so we decided to go around campus and ask people about him. It would be easy to define Professor Lucci as a friend, uh, but he is uh, much more than a friend. Cheerful. I would say that fits him very well because he's always like running and doing something and everybody around him is always like happy and they're like, oh! So yeah, I think cheerful fits him the best. Thought-provoking? I mean, honest person. I think he's really enthusiastic about, a jo about his job. I think uh, he's really caring about his students and he likes to uh, prolong the university experience to be the best one. He's very, very generous, always engaged. Uh, with things he's doing, and and uh, and he put, I mean, others uh, before himself over time, which is a rare quality in human beings nowadays, where to be selfish is a sort of uh, first commandment for people. Uh, and I know him is with me the same way he is with other people, with his lovely family, with his kid and his wife. <laughs> What is teaching for you and why did you decide to do it? Yes, you know, uh, teaching is like being a medical doctor because a medical doctor is someone who doesn't like imperfections in the body and they try to fix it. I don't like um, uh, I don't like it when people don't think in a well-organized, uh, logical, linear way, and that's why I decided to teach philosophy in order in order to help students uh, to, to 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 think properly, to think in a rational, linear way, in a well-organized way, to develop sound arguments, well-grounded arguments, uh, persuasive uh, points. Uh, that's what I try to teach my students. Um, is it stressful juggling with professional life and personal life? It's really difficult, I gotta be honest, especially for those who are committed, for those who grade seriously, for those who take care of their students. Uh, taking care of uh, your students and of your family at once is really a demanding job. It's two years, two years and three months old. Really, he's really active, uh, he's an active kid. Uh, he doesn't sleep much, and when he doesn't sleep, he's uh, moving and playing all the day. There's never a moment when he sits down and uh, stays quiet. Can you share with us some of your plans for the near future? Yes, now I'm uh, working a lot for uh, this conference, uh, and uh, it's really a lot of uh, work. I've been working on it for two years, uh, and now it's the final rush until, uh, until early June, basically, late May, early June. Then I'm working on, uh, I'm also working on several projects, articles, and I'm working on a book, on a new monograph. A book on uh, views of uh, uh, early Christianity, therefore Jesus Christ, the Trinity, in the English Enlightenment, uh, specifically in the works of uh, uh, the English uh, anti-Trinitarian theologians of the 17th, 17th century, uh, in the religious works of uh, John Locke, and um, in the works of Isaac Newton and his disciples, and in the writings of several deist and skeptical authors uh, in 18th century England. And Kali, how about you? How would you describe Professor Lucci? I'm a great 
because he is an amazing professor and he is super funny, but during this project I got to know him better and I could say that he's a great person. Day to the sky, open up your eyes and see how far you get.